Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us for our fast chat hosted by Wards Auto. I'm Adam Ragazzino. I'm the battery and electric powertrain analyst here at Wards Intelligence. I'm joined today by Michael Hessler. He's the transformation partner in EY's e-mobility practice. Hi, Mike. Thanks for joining me today. So, Thank you. My pleasure. Today, Mike, we're going to be talking about utilizing data to demystify EV batteries. Let's jump right in. Mike, can you give a, a little more detail about why data is important for managing the life cycle of the battery? Absolutely. And let me just start by talking a little bit about our e-mobility practice and kind of what we're focused on. But currently, and really over the last several years, we've been working with major companies and, and uh, value-added partners in the um, the building of batteries, the building of the materials, the um the tracking of the asset once it's in the vehicle. Um, we're working with the companies on trying to figure out what to do with used batteries, when to repurpose, when to recycle. And so the point I'm making is we're working with traditional OEMs to make this transition to BEV. We're also working with startups. And what we're finding is there are a number of use cases in that life cycle that are very impactful for trusting the materials in terms of sourcing. To, to make sure it's not sourced from conflict zones, uh, from managing information in the production process around quality. There's a lot of variability in the production process between batches and between materials. Um, using data within the factory to understand yields, which are a huge driver of costs. So low yields means more materials, more costs. It, it increases the cost of the battery. And then once the batteries are, are put into vehicles during the ownership process, being able to track conditions that the battery um, experiences from charging, from charging at home, from charging with uh, supercharging stations, uh, any kind of events that would be important in terms of micro collisions, maybe um, flooding, things of that nature. But it all kind of rolls into this, this life cycle kind of data management concept and platform. A lot of people call it battery passport, but there's a lot of um, there's a lot of utility and a lot of value in, in capturing all these events in the history and having traceability of that battery all the way through the ownership experience and then on towards the second life. So we're working with uh, companies right now and trying to figure out how to convert state of health into a market value for that battery, which ties into a large extent the value of the vehicle. And so when do you make decisions about how to repurpose? When do you make decisions on when to recycle? And so that whole life cycle, we see a lot of value being created by capturing uh, data in a platform that can ensure timeless integrity and access to the various players um, that participate in the channel. Got it. And so we talked a lot about what the industry might get out of it. What about consumers, Mike? Why are, what are consumers concerned about when it comes to EVs and their batteries? Well, I think, I, first of all, um, what we're seeing is there's still a lot of consumer sentiment to, to, to go EV to make the transition, right? And there's increase in sales year over year, 2022 to 2023, over 50% increase in EV sales in North America. There's still very bold predictions on EV growth as you get out to 2025, 2030, where by 2030, at least at a global level, the expectation is that over 50% of the vehicles will be EV. So we see strong consumer sentiment. I think some of the challenges, I think there's some short-term challenges and then some more systemic challenges that we need to address. The short-term issues as we see them, certainly interest rates, are, are driving up the, the the payments and the lease payments and loan payments. And, and part of that is just the relative cost of uh, EV versus its ICE counterpart. On average, they're 28% um, higher in terms of a purchase price. So if you then apply an increased interest rate to that, it has a real impact of two to $300 a month. So interest rates are a challenge. You know, you have overall inflation that's up. So households are trying to figure out you know, where to spend their budgets. I think the other thing that is a little bit of a challenge in the short term is um, just the the anxiety around around um, range, right? It's it's been talked about a lot. You know, it doesn't help when studies come out that show that on average, well, I guess the range of um, actual versus stated 
um, is lagging between 12 and 26% in some cases. So I think there's some opportunity to educate the public, right, on what to expect, but then also a little more transparency there so that people don't get nervous about, you know, how their vehicle is going to perform, not just stated ranges, but actual ranges based on if you've got passengers or if it's if it's below freezing or above, you know, a certain temperature, these all impact um, the effective or actual ranges that you'll get. And again, I think it's another opportunity for leveraging data as you think about capturing, you know, the contextual information around the battery's performance and using tools like machine learning to, to really help you plan a trip better based on, you know, what you intend to do and what the, um, the weather, et cetera, is, is looking like. Sure. No, that's great. And the now, the other thing, sorry to sorry to everybody, but there was some longer term things too that I wanted to talk about. Sorry about that. Um, one one would be just the the price of entry. I, I mentioned twenty eight percent difference between ICE and a BEV equivalent. I think the other thing that's um, more systemic is availability of of charging stations and charging ports. I mean, currently the thirty six percent of the counties in america don't have any charging ports whatsoever and most of the charging stations are concentrated you know in the east and the west and so there's still a big investment that needs to be made in, in making you know those stations and those charge ports available to consumers not to mention some of the complications around you know apartment complexes if i live in a, a dense urban area and i park on the street how do i get the charge so I think that's another more systemic. And then finally, um, there's just the, the total cost of, of ownership. So again, think about insurance, think about service and maintenance, just because of the newness of the technology, um, that total cost of ownership um, is, is, is a challenge too for consumers. No, that's great. And you touched on some of the uh, ways it helps consumers better understand the battery. Can you can you talk a little more about how access to the data helps consumers really understand their battery? Well, I certainly think battery health, um, because that's such a big driver of market value and residual value. So, you know, there's battery management systems in these vehicles, right, that capture a lot of data around the battery all the way down to the cell level. I think there's an opportunity to make this information more available you know, with, you know, some, some mobile apps with the technology in the vehicle to help me better understand how my driving, how my charging uh, would and could be impacting my vehicle. You know, these vehicles like to run um, between 20 and 80%. So how do I optimize when I do charge? What's the optimal amount of time to charge, right? I think that, again, I mentioned machine learning on the vehicle could help. You know, it, it's simple. I think if you make the data available to consumers, um, they'll modify their behaviors. It's really that simple, whether that's in charging, whether that's in when they charge, how they charge, how they drive. Um, you know, certainly most folks that I talk to that, that buy and, and love their EVs, they care about the environmental impact. So even the, the ESG elements to all this, making that available, um, I think could have a huge impact um, in, in terms of just the overall um, consumer experience, I guess is the way to put it. Got it. No, that's great. And what about back to the manufacturers now? How can OEMs incorporate that data into production of EVs and increase consumer confidence and adoption? Yeah, I think uh, back to the manufacturers. So I think one of the challenges being just price of entry, right? Vehicles are more expensive. So driving scale and economies, but also I mentioned some of the complexities right around particularly the battery manufacturing using analytics in the production process to increase yields which will drive down costs but also one of the challenges is today there's no standards around quality for for ev batteries right so just think about something as simple as as your light bulb and having it be certified that it tapped you know, it met certain conditions, right, for safe use in your home or a light fixture, maybe a better way to put it. Um, I think there's there's a need for some standards there so that as you're producing the battery at the cell level, at the module level, at the pack level, having data that's captured that shows how that battery passed, you know, quality checks, how it um, performed during a testing process, 
Um, I think using data to, to reduce the variation today, there's a lot of variation in quality coming off the line for, for battery cells, for example. So I think uh, there would be huge improvements there on quality and cost. And again, creating that passport around the battery. So I've got the data, it's verified, it's, it's uh, maintained and stays with the battery. I think it could create a lot of confidence with consumers that they're going to get something that's going to last, right? I mean, most of these batteries are predicted to last, you know, eight to 10 to 20 years. Um, you know, the challenge is whoever owns the, the asset kind of owns the risk of the battery not performing the way it should. And it's such a large part of the investment in the vehicle. Um, I think that's got consumers a little wary as well. No, that's great. Thank you. Uh, and unfortunately, Mike, we're out of time, but this has been a great conversation. Thank you so much Thank for your so time much. today. And I hope everyone out there enjoyed the discussion with UI about using data to demystify the EV battery. Thank you all for watching. Thank you.